Welcome to the second job of the week video. This video will be focusing on retrieving Twitter data in near to real time using a talent route and a talent job. First, you will need a Twitter account and will need access to the Twitter developer portal. Go to developer.twitter.com, then click sign up here. But as I'm a member, I will go straight through to my dashboard by clicking this. Here you can see my talent on talent project. You will also see my talent Twitter search app and my talent route Twitter app, the one I'm showing you today. Now let's go to my Talent on Talent project. This is where you can edit and modify the apps you've created within the project. This is where you can add your new app, but I'll be editing mine to show you how it's configured. Here you can see the app name, the app ID, description, environment, and the authentication settings. We won't be doing too much with these since we will generate keys and tokens that we can use for ourselves here. Here you can see the API key and secret regenerate button. The bearer token, we won't be using this. And the access token and secret regenerate button. To start with, we'll regenerate our API key and secret codes. I won't be keeping these constant when I share this job. Here we can see the API key and the API key secret. I'll start by clicking the copy button of the API key and then I'll copy this to a text pad for use later. Next I'll do the same thing with the API key secret. This can take a bit of time but once it's done, click the Yes, I Save Them button. Once this is done, we will do exactly the same thing with the access token and secret codes. This time, we will click on the copy button of the access token and copy it to a text file. We will then do the same with the access token secret copy button. All of these codes need to be kept in a safe place, but if you lose them, you can of course regenerate them. As before, we click Yes, I save them to exit. Now we're done here, so let's go over to our Talon route. As with last time, I'm using Talon Open Studio ESB version 8. Let's open the route. This is a very simple route, but before we start looking at the components, let's look at the context variables. Let me just expand everything so that we can see. Here we have the consumer key and the consumer secret, or the API key and the API key secret. The access token. The access token secret. Twitter query, which is a string query which we would use to search Twitter. We also have file path. This is for the location of the file we want to store the data in. You can use anything to store the data in in Talend, but I chose to make it simple by using a file. Here are all of the keys that I stored on the text pad earlier. They have all been copied into the context variables. Now let's take a look at our components. We have a C messaging endpoint, a C processor, and a C talent job. First, the C messaging endpoint. There is a nice trick you can do here to bring up the talent help for all talent components. Simply click on the component and hit F1. This will load the correct help page to your browser. Here you will find everything you need to know about the C messaging endpoint. First, let's look at the advanced settings of the C messaging endpoint. Here we need to set the Twitter camel component. To do this, we click the green button and then we go through the list of included camel components. We've already got it set here, so this is just an example. Now let's take a look at the URI in our basic settings. It's a little bit cramped here, so let's take a look at what I've copied onto my text pad so that we can analyze it. This URI is made up of hard-coded text and context variables. Here we have the Twitter search endpoint, our Twitter query context variable, our count parameter set to 100, number of pages set to 1, 
A delay set to 5,500 milliseconds. Filter old set to true. Then we set consumer key to our context variable. Consumer secret, access token and access token secret are set likewise. Let's look at the Apache Camel component documentation. This is really useful with talent routes. Go to camel.apache.org forward slash components, then search for the component you want on the left hand side. We've gone for Twitter search. This documentation will help you to understand the URI we have put together and also help you modify it if you feel the need in the future. It can take a bit of getting used to but is incredibly beneficial to put the effort in. Back to our route. The next component to look at is the C processor component. This is where we extract the Twitter data from the messages received. For this, we will use the Twitter4j functionality as this is what is used by the Twitter camel component. First, we get the in message from the exchange using the first line of code. Next, we will create a Twitter4j status object called tweet. This will be used to read the Twitter data. Anything we need to know about the tweet can be gathered from the tweet object here. For the rest, we use the message object we created first and assign headers with our tweet values using the next five lines of code. We have tweet text from tweet.getText, tweet ID from tweet.getID, tweet date from tweet.getCreatedAt, tweet username from tweet.getUser.getName, and tweet user screen name from tweet dot get user get screen name. Our next and last component of the route is the C talent job component. It makes use of the write tweets to file job that I've written for this. You can see this in the project menu here. This component is used to enable our root data to be passed to the job it calls you can see that I am passing our file path context variable value from the root to a context called file path in the job. Let's take a look at the job. This job is very simple. It is made up of a troot input, which is used for collecting our data. We are also using a tfile output delimited. This will write our Twitter data to a file in CSV format. See that it uses the context variable called file path. You can see it in the job's context window. Remember, this is a different variable to the one in the root. Let's take a look at where this is passed again by looking at our root. Here we see the context being passed. And back to the same name context variable in our job. As I said, the troot input is used to bring in our data. To do that, we need to first create a schema. As you will see, I have created five columns. Tweet text, tweet ID, tweet date, tweet username, and tweet user screen name. Pay attention to set a suitable date format when using dates, otherwise you may lose important data like seconds, for example. Finally, we'll look at how the columns in the schema are set using the Apache Camel simple expression language. While I point to each of these settings, let me explain. What we're doing here is requesting the in header container of the message. We are then selecting each of the named headers. So we're requesting the in part of the message, we want a header, and then we want, for example, the tweet user screen name header. Now that we're done here, let's save this job, let's go back to the root, and let's try and run it and see what we get. Let's resize the window and go to the Run tab. This route will need to compile and this might take a few seconds. So let's click Run and start this going. What we are expecting is to see the metrics which will be shown above the root 1 and root 2 labels to start growing. This will happen every 5.5 seconds. After it has run for a few calls, we will stop it and check the output file. 
Remember, roots aren't batch like jobs are. They will run forever, so you will need to stop this. So here we can see the first and second load of tweets found. Let's wait for a couple more and then stop. Okay, this appears to be going quite well. We've seen quite a few tweets come through in a few seconds. Um, I'll stop this now and now we can look at the file that's been produced. Over to the file. So in the first row, we can see the header. We have tweet text, tweet ID, tweet date, tweet username, and tweet user screen name. Let's look at one of the tweet records. You'll notice that records can appear over more than one row and are contained within double quotes. This first column is the tweet text. We then have the tweet ID, the date column, the username, and the user screen name. As I said, the records will be over multiple rows in some cases. You will also see emojis included, as you can see here. So here we have seen a root made up of three components, making use of a job with two components. Really quite simple, but potentially incredibly useful. As before, this route will be available for you to download. If you have any questions, please feel free to come to Talon Community and ask for R Hall for help.